Hey there, whiskey lovers. So for my very first review ever this evening, I thought we would start off with a, a favorite whiskey of mine from an amazing distillery. And it was actually my, my very special birthday gift to myself. Um, so the distillery is Buna Haven, and the whiskey that we're gonna be enjoying tonight is the limited release Palo Cortado cask finish. So before we get into it, really quickly, I just want to tell you a little bit about why this is such a spectacular whiskey and why in particular I'm such a huge fan of Buna Haven. Uh, so I actually had the pleasure of going there in March of 2019. And I have to say out of all the distilleries that I visited while I was in Scotland, and it was a lot, <laughs> Buna Haven was the one that impressed me the most with the quirky offerings that they had in their in their shop. They had so many little tiny bottles that were just experimental casks that they bottled and you could only ever buy there. So I was kicking myself for not having booked a tour and I absolutely, next time I'm in Scotland, that is the first place I'm going. Um, but yeah, I came home with a single bottle of, um, of one of their releases and uh, so jumped at the chance to get my hands on uh, another special bottle of theirs. So Buna Haven Palo Cortado started its life November, or at least my bottle started its life November 22nd, 1997. So it is a 20 year old bottle and therefore old enough to drink. <laughs> um, and yeah, so it's, it, so all I've been able to find on its first 19 years of existence is that it was matured in traditional oak casks. I can't find any information out there on whether that was uh, refill casks, bourbon, sherry, it just says traditional oak. I'm gonna guess there's some sherry involved based on the tasting, but that's for later. So I guess the big question here is, what is Palo Cortado? Why should I care? So Palo Cortado, uh, a, a Palo Cortado cask is a cask that has held Palo Cortado sherry, which is sherry that at some point in time during its maturation process uh, lose, loses its uh, protective yeast covering and begins to oxidize, turning it into something more like an Oloroso sherry. So the finished product, the finished Palo Cortado, um, exists somewhere in between um, you know, uh, a Montelato and an Oloroso. So you get a nose of a Montelato and a, a body of an Oloroso, which is really lovely, but it's only about one to 2% of the sherry produced every year. And so as such, it's super rare, which is why it's really cool to get to try a whiskey that's finished uh, finished in the, in the cask. So I'm going to pour it for you guys and we're gonna give it a little, uh, little taste. All right, here's the bottle. a little nip. Ooh, more than a little nip. Mm. Oh god, it's so beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna wax the because I'm not careful. There is a process and I will stick to it. So first off, the color. Now I would call that a rich gold. It's got these lovely orangey notes. Just kind of screams, put me in your mouth. And the legs on this, this guy, I mean, it's really just clinging to the glass. Um, yeah, so nosing whiskey. I know there's a bunch of different opinions on how to go about it. You can feel free to shout at me for my techniques in, in the, the comment sections. And please remember that I'm just, I'm just a nerd who really likes whiskey. Be gentle, I'm not a pro. So the first thing that jumps out at me in there is, and, and that the scent sits at the front of, 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 my, of my palate, is, the, is this rich berries and cream. It's this really luscious um, red berries, like, a, like I get raspberry, cherry, and then working inwards, nuts, definitely walnut, and 
and just just a wisp of smoke but not like an aggressive wisp it's more like um it's more like if you've ever had really smoky tea it's a little bit like that when you first open the teapot and you just get that waft of really gentle warm toastiness some orange in there too i think and something peanutty almost like a peanut brittle there's a little bit of a salt tang to it which is really lovely i'm an absolute sucker for salty whiskeys please send me your salty whiskey recommendations shall we have a sip Mm -hmm. wow oh the complexity is absolutely astonishing and it's leaving my mouth just watering and that's not just because it's a cask strength it is red berries again right off the bat that's the first thing that jumps out at me that sweet peanut brittle nuttiness is crawling up the back of my tongue it's like reintroducing to itself after i've swallowed which is fantastic and it's really, the body of this whiskey is just saturating my palate in a way that's that's so enjoyable. But I think the really standout thing for me here is the earthiness of this whiskey. It's It's got this rounded, almost mossy quality to it. And, you know, as I'm, as I'm swallowed and I'm letting sort of the finish develop on my palate, it's this, this rich earth, and peanut brittle and like a lingering memory of, of red fruit somewhere in the background. It's absolutely delightful. There's, there's hints of vanilla popping through. Kind of lost the orange there that was on the nose. I'm not really getting much of that in here. And some spice too, maybe um, like a cinnamon or a nutmeg or something. Something a little Christmassy is in there. So if I had to describe this whiskey, experientially i would say that drinking this reminds me of going for a long walk in an old growth forest after the rain where you've got that that smell of warm earth and you know maybe someone's lit a fire nearby and there's just the faintest wisp of smoke and maybe you're munching some trail mix as you're as you're walking along and you know you're inhaling that 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 light ever so slight bit of smoke on the air, the damp earth, and enjoying crunching some some peanuts and uh, and some sultanas and uh, and dried cranberries. It's it's really it's like a lovely afternoon in the woods in a glass. Um, I'm not really one for numerical rankings for whiskey because I feel like unless you're looking within a distillery, um, it's so hard to compare one one to another. Um, you know, they're all so incredibly different and I, and I enjoy them for very different reasons. So I'm just going to say that this whiskey is an experience that I wholeheartedly recommend, especially if you're like me and enjoy long walks in the woods. Cheers.